Hello everyone, I'm Seoya and I wasn't planning on doing another commentary video, but then I realized my thoughts were a hard space ship record and my dreams were a hard space ship record and my brain was becoming a hard space ship record, so I might as well spill some of it out and my head is going to explode. Just to make sure this obsession remains healthy. Also, there's been some interesting additions in the strats I use, so I get to talk about them. Like last time, I'm a thought thief, so most of this figuring out is thanks to other people on the Hard Space Shipbreaker Discord. Like clowns. I hope you're happy. <laughs> I won't necessarily give names for every move, because else we'll be here a long time. I start this run grabbing the antennas and sending them to the barge. A great way to mess that up is by moving them too fast down or breaking them against the ship or simply not landing them in the barge. A check in the upper right corner if the total amount goes up to 36,000, 18k each. The first major strat change in this run is due to a bug discovered by clowns, so we can expect it to be fixed eventually. The airlock can be cut out right away without an automatic depressurization. For reminder, something like this should happen. Usually, you would have to find your way around the ship to reach the door console, which takes some time, especially with the very large nacelles we have on this one. Here you can just pop this off, send it to the barge, and start feathering the tanks as you make your way to the atmospheric regulator. The ship is still pressurized, so you can't start cutting the insides right away, but it's still a much more direct way in. We depressurize both the inside and the airlock using the scanner to skip the animation, then start cutting. I also flush the fuel pipes right away, both due to proximity and to avoid forgetting them later on. While I'm here, I also start setting up the thruster extraction since I'm at the right angle. This is to free the thruster cap so it won't be in the way when we push the thruster out. And for the longest time I forgot how to aim. Then back to cutting panels, using the easy access gained by pushing up the first panel. We need them out of the way to send all of the tanks down to the barge. For the tanks, I dizzy chained them before tethering them to the barge, but it doesn't always work well. While I was lucky here, they have a bad tendency of crashing and exploding into each other, so sometimes you just have to babysit each one individually. It's especially annoying here since coolant is once again a requirement in the work orders. I could have left those ceiling panels alone, but it lightens up the load for the final send-off. I then go into the cockpit and tether the computers, chair and storage bins free. The storage bins keep the doors in place just like the cut points do, as long as they stick to the wall. Closing the doors will allow me to pull the whole thing off once the cut points are destroyed. But you can also destroy the whole aluminum frame if you don't mind the floating bits. I do. While we're here, we also cut up the nozzles, two cut points and the pipe which is now empty. If you forget to flush the pipes, expect explosions. I'm taking that door console right away. The work order requires 8 mechanical pieces, and the door console is one, so you don't want to miss one. The reactor, we can tether straight to the barge once the passage is free. Sometimes it's tempting to look and make sure objects make it to the destination, but while you're looking, you're wasting time. Once it's sent off, you'd normally be able to trust it's going where it's supposed to. Now that there's room to move, we go back to the thruster. I overshot here, but let's say I went straight to the manual override. When it's activated, you have a few seconds to position yourself a bit further away and grapple the thruster. The moment it's free, I move forward to get it inside the hole so it doesn't catch on the edges. Give it a gentle push and it's free. Unless you're unlucky and it explodes or it explodes the fuel tanks on the sides. That's why moving the fuel tanks down to the barge might be preferable beforehand, but I only started doing that after this attempt and this is still the one with my best score. This hazardous method has also been discovered by clowns. I send the thruster directly to the barge and make sure it doesn't melt the cap. Thruster is also a mechanical piece, another one of the list. Here I try to send the wrench down to the barge and failed. It's not worth that much so I don't linger on it. 
Only have one tether left, so I tethered the cockpit to the master jack on my way back and see that the cargo hatch didn't make it earlier. I was lucky here and it didn't go flying into space. I grab a closer to get speed faster, then push off the nassels we detached earlier to tether them to the barge. While I'm here, I see I didn't take the door of the cockpit, so I pull it off and send it to the processor so the floating objects are no longer blocked. I could pull them out one by one, but dragging the whole cockpit with a tether while you're doing other stuff is faster. Cutting one of the cut points allows me to get the coolant tanks out with more ease, while keeping all the nanocarbon together so we can send it all at once later. Added some tethers cause one wasn't doing the job fast enough, then moved on to the main body while it was drifting. Now this one will require to go further back. On the Hot Space Shipbreaker Discord, Goff mentioned he considered sending the aluminum frame into the processor because the door still attached to it might be worth more than the aluminum. Experiments ensued. So, turns out on this ship there's a lot of nanocarbon attached to the aluminum and part of the frame itself is also nanocarbon. So if you don't need to send the frame into the furnace, why even bother separating it from the rest of the structure? This realization led to the conclusion that we just have to get rid of what gets in the way of sending objects down to the barge, maybe lighten up the load enough that you can still tether it quick enough into the processor, and here we go. That makes for many cut points we don't need to worry about anymore. Less cutting time, more time bonus. We don't forget the console while we're here, one more mechanical part for the work order. Cutting on the starboard side, where the airlock is, frees it and makes it possible to send it down to the barge. Since everything is going into the processor anyway, I don't stop to cut the aft. So it does mean that there is more to drag for the tethers. While this is sent off, we free the last few tanks. I messed up this part a lot and had to restart over many exploded coolant tanks. Once that's done, no slacking off on the deadering. Now, I still had a door console into the cockpit, but if I had somehow lost a mechanical part, I could have taken the one we used to flush the fuel pipes. It's only worth $15, but it can help out with the work order in a pinch. The reason why I didn't detach the atmospheric regulator and the door console is because they tend to either get lost, broken, or I send them in the wrong direction while pushing this pile into the barge. To make sure I get them, I leave them until the end. Power junction box and power cells are done last because otherwise they destroy other objects like the coolant tanks or the door console. You can also be damaged by them, but as long as your cumulative damage doesn't kill you, that does not cure any penalty. The glass cutting I leave for last so I can do it without anything in my way and get as much of it as I can. It's entirely possible to do it from outside, but I didn't need to when I already had this angle to work from. 
It's extremely frustrating when the cutting doesn't work to detach it completely on the first go. Thankfully, I got it right this time. I feather it so I don't need to worry about trajectory, the furnace will claim it soon enough. That red line is the game telling me about the negligible amount of aluminum lost, nothing to lose sleep over. All that's left is to cross stitch the cockpit until there's no tether left, we won't need them for anything else. You can break the cockpit down in smaller parts to help out the tethers, but then you have to maneuver around the detachable parts on the sides. While it's being dragged, I do a full scan of the bay with the 3 scan mode to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. All that's left is some debris, and since I don't want to pay for more tethers when it wouldn't make a huge difference with the ones already in place, I send them in while waiting for the cockpit to go to finish. I even got the food pack. Looking at the mass indicator until everything has made it in, and there we go! This wasn't my last attempt, but I wasn't able to do it better in the following 25 hours. I'm fine with this one though, there weren't too many mistakes and I probably could have managed it faster, but you always need room to improve to get some motivation. Next week's the gecko, so I will have a lot of room to improve. Anyway, thanks for watching this video, I hope to see you in the next one, and until then, have a nice day!